Here we are today. Right, here we are. You got the vibe in the building. Hey, man. What's up? That's what's up. I feel like my parents knew, like, from a younger age that I was, you know, mm-hmm. something wasn't right. Mm-hmm. But I've always had girlfriends, you know, I was married. Okay. So, <laughs> so you know, everybody knew, but they didn't know. Hmm, so that's cool. That, that, that's definitely a, a crazy topic. So you got married. Who did you get married to, please? Why did you... You married a female, correct? Yes. Okay. Um. Okay, so it's crazy that you said to please. Because... For real, for real, it really was to, I'm not going to say to please my family, but it really was that. Well, obviously, yeah. It really was that because when I came out, it was a big, like, it was bad because my mom, she was raised in the convent mm. and my dad was military based. He didn't believe in none of that. Mm. So it was. I am stoked to bring you today's episode with Big Sexy, a.k.a. Akbar Murray. He moved to a predominantly white neighborhood at a young age, but being the friendly dude that he is, he made friends, but also had to defend his sister from racism in school. Big Sexy is also an open homosexual that married a woman to please his family. This is a great conversation between two people from totally different cultures, totally different backgrounds, yet the similarities are undeniable. If you like this video, then like this video. I hope you enjoy this episode of Chopping It Up. So welcome back to Chopping It Up, man. This is the podcast for the underdog by the underdog. Today we are here with Kenny. Yes. Kenny, you reached out to me. You want to get on this pod, bro? Look, yes. I'm going to tell you this straight off the top. I have so many people that reach out and want to do a podcast. Then I reach back out and they're nowhere to be found. They right. flake. You hit me up like three times. So I'm like, this dude is serious, man. Let's get yeah. it. Let's get it. So give me a little introduction. Tell me why you want to come on a little bit about you and then we'll get started right there. All right. Well, um, I, I saw your podcast with somebody else on it. So I was like, wait. He's local. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, I just started my podcast, so let me go in and jump on it. So I started watching your podcast, and I saw that it was like mostly about the addiction and the recovery of addiction. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, I went through something like that, too. I got locked up. So I was like, let me hit him up. Let's see what's about. So here we are today. Right, here we are. You got the vibe in the building. Hey, man. What's up? That's what's up. So where are you from? I'm originally from Dayton, Ohio. Okay. But I only lived there for two years, and after my sister was born, we moved to D.C. Okay. And then we moved to Front Royal. Mm-hmm. So when we got to Front Royal, how old, how, high, how old was you then? High school, okay. I was ahead. high school in Front Royal. Um, I well, actually I went started in junior high, and then it went. It was good for a while, but coming from the city mm-hmm. to a predominantly white neighborhood and okay. all that, it was a um, how would you say it? Like I guess it was like a drastic change for me, right? So I had to readjust to like making friends and everything and all that, but it really wasn't that bad because I'm a people person, so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm cool. So do you feel like when you got like how do people judge you differently? Like I feel like the the racial divide is definitely there, right? Yeah, so it how was. how was it when you first got there? You're in high school, middle school. Was you accepted in school um, or no? I was accepted, but not really because there was only a handful of black people at okay. the school at the time when I started going there, right? And um. They all just hung out together. So I was like, well, I'm not going to sit here and be racially divided. Mm-hmm. So I started making friends with everybody. Mm-hmm. And that's just me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I make friends with everybody. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be like, oh, no. Right. It's just, oh, we over here. They over right, there. No, right, right. I'm everywhere. <laughs> right. And you gravitate everywhere. towards the people that have similarities to you. Yeah, right? exactly. Um, I think that's where a lot of that starts at. Culturally, we kind of listen to different musics. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? And that's based on where you're from, who you grew up with. And exactly. it's not necessarily race-based as much as it is just it's your a culture. culture thing. Yeah, yeah it's just a culture thing. Uh, speaking of not many black people in school, there was very few in my school as well. And one of them's name was Tyson Brown. He rode my bus. One of my best friends, bro, uh, R.I.P. Tyson. He right. died about a year ago, man. Not off of any addiction type stuff. Right. But he was always a cool cat, man. We always liked him. We always talked to him. Uh, I remember my buddy Michael Duncan taking up for him one time during something he didn't even need to take up for him for and punching another dude in the face. And it wasn't even that necessary. Right. Uh, but yeah, man, we always liked Tyson. But I, I definitely remember it being that divide where there was a whole lot of white people. How old are you? I'm 38. Actually, I just turned 38 okay. last Sunday. Yeah, well, happy birthday. Yes, happy yes. Birthday. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's around the same time. I'm 10 years older than you are. So it's pretty close to the same time mm-hmm. as far as what was going on in the world. Yeah. All right. So take us from there. All right. From um, high school, uh, I didn't finish high school because I got into a situation three months before graduation, mm-hmm. and I got kicked out. I got expelled. Okay. So that messed up everything for my graduation. But 
the calls was uh, I feel like the calls was relevant, <laughs> but yeah, I got expelled from school three months before graduation. You want you want to tell me why it was relevant? <laughs> okay, so uh, like I said, all the black people hung out. It was morning time. Everybody was everywhere. Uh-huh. So like me and my sister are a year apart, so we went to the same school, and. Uh, my sister came downstairs in the in the cafeteria. Was like, "Oh, this boy called me a nigger." Da 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 da. No, so you know what you're doing. So <laughs> it was a it was a little riot. I got I hit somebody with a lock, and they expelled me from school. <laughs> you went gangster so, before gangster. No, 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 no. I'm not no gangster. I'm, I'm yeah, but not you no went in young. You I mean, I had to. Yeah, I had to. I feel that. I had I feel to. That. You know what I'm saying? Like. My sister Protect is my people, yeah, bro. My sister's my twin, so yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I definitely had to do what I needed to do, but it cost me my graduation. Mm-hmm. But I did go to Job Corps, and I went to Baltimore. So I left um, Front Royal and went to Baltimore, and that was a culture change from going to Front Royal to Baltimore. <laughs> it was crazy because I was like, "Well, I really, I don't know nobody. Like, what the fuck am I do out here?" So, but I went there for two years, and I got my trade in security. Which was crazy because I'm fat as hell and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. So okay. I was like, let me just pick a trade. So I picked security and not knowing it was military police security. So it was like training for like the military. Mm. So we had to like get up at five o'clock, do marching around the center and everything. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. Not my best pick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not my best pick. You didn't think that one through, huh? Definitely didn't because I should have did culinary arts. I like to okay. eat. Okay. <laughs> I like to eat. I should have did culinary right. arts. Right. But um, I stepped out the box, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I was like, I'll do something different. And like, everybody in my family is military based. So I was like, well, let me just follow them. My brother went to the Navy right out of high school. He was stationed in Japan. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, let me follow him. Let me go be this. No, I'm sorry. It wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. The fitness and shit was not mm-hmm. me at all. So when I got back home from Baltimore, my mom and them were living in Woodstock. I had just found out my dad had cancer. So I was like, well, I'm coming home. I'm, a, I'm just going to finish here and then come home. So I did that, and uh, when I moved to Woodstock from Baltimore, <laughs> that was a culture shock again. Cause, like East Baltimore, downtown Baltimore? Well, I lived actually in Woodstock, Baltimore, but okay. I would always be in the East Baltimore because okay. on weekends we could leave campus and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I was always in East Baltimore. Like I never came back home for the whole two years I was out in Job Corps. Mm, okay. So um, when I finally did come home, it was like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. And see, back then... <laughs> My parents didn't know that I was gay. Okay. So when I came home, I had long hair. It was purple. I had contacts. It was green. Mm-hmm. So my mom was like, the fuck is going on? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you the fuck is going on? You went away one way and come back another right? <laughs> A whole other person. You right, know what I'm okay. saying? But, like, I feel like my parents knew, like, from a younger age that I was, you know, mm-hmm. something wasn't right. Mm-hmm. But I've always had girlfriends, you know what I'm saying? I was married. Okay. So, <laughs> so you know, everybody knew, but they didn't know. Hmm, so that's cool. that, that, that's definitely a, a crazy topic. So you got married. Who did you get married to, please? Why did you you married a female, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, it wasn't really to okay. So it's crazy that you said to please, because for real, for real, it really was to. I'm not gonna say to please my family, but it really was that. Well, obviously, yeah. It really was that because when I came out, it was a big shit. Like it was bad because my mom. She was raised in the convent, mm. and my dad was military based. He didn't believe in none of that, mm. so it was, mm. it was crazy when I came out. But everybody took it well, but my mom and my older brother. Okay. My mom, I didn't talk to her for two days. She was like, "Don't talk to me," so it was straight like dead in the house mm-hmm. after I came out. Mm-hmm. But I met the girl, and I told her though off jump. I was like, "Look, I don't know what you want to do. I don't know how you want to take this." But I'm gay. I was like, you can take it how you want to. So she was like, oh, it's cool. I'm bisexual. I was like, oh, all right. Well, we can make a party out of it. Okay, okay. <laughs> and that's what it was like in the beginning of our relationship. It was just all over the place. Right, okay. <laughs> but then we really did like, you know, we really did catch feelings. I did propose to her, but we didn't never get married. Hmm. So then when we did get married, a month before we got married, my mom and her aunt had called me. And we were at our house and they were like, we need y'all to come to our house right now. So I'm thinking, like, something happened. We walk in. They was like, oh, well, y'all are getting married next month. Who? Who's getting married next month? Mm -hmm. I was like, what the fuck? I was just in there, like, shocked. But, yeah, we got married, and 
That was that. How but, long did that last? Um, we were actually together for ten years. Really? But the marriage only lasted for five. Okay. And she wanted to go her separate way. I went my separate way, it and happens, that's right? what it was. Mm -hmm. And after the wet, after we got our divorce, that's when um the addiction set in. Okay. And that's when the addiction set in after the divorce. After we got our divorce, then we split up. Um, she was still living in the house that we were living in, but we we started we shared apartment. Like okay. she had a room, I had a room. Okay. But um, one of her friends came in because she was already on drugs. All I did was smoke weed at the time. So um, what one of her friends using? came in. You don't know what she. It using. was meth. Okay. It okay. was meth. Okay. <laughs> so her friend came in. It was like around the time of her birthday. He gave her some meth. Da da da. He came in my room and gave me some meth. I didn't know what it was, so I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Mm -hmm. They was like, "Just crush it up and snort it." Mm. All right. <laughs> I was like, "All right." Yeah, you and trust these people, right? I, and that's why I did it. So I was like, mm -hmm. I'll trust them. So I was like... It's so funny. I just put that video out. And that was one of the things that uh, the kid said when he was in the truck. Damn, I can't remember his name right now. But he's like, you're not going to... They don't tell you the fact that it's going to be your friends that bring it to you. Yeah. That it's going to be your friends that want you to use it. Definitely. So that's so crazy that you it, say that. It was definitely my friends that influenced it. Because if it was somebody on the street, I was like, fuck all no that. Way. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I'm not doing that. And besides, like I said... um, I really never was exposed to drugs like that in my life, in okay. my younger life. Right. So because, that's childhood and things like that. Yeah, it, it was, was never exposed right, to that. Right. Your like, parents lived normal. Mom, yeah. My mom and dad, it was two family home. Uh -huh. My four brothers and sisters. Uh -huh. You know, we never experienced none of that. Me and my younger sister never experienced drugs until we got like 16, 17. Okay. Because my mom kept us sheltered. Like, it was bad. <laughs> my mom kept us sheltered because my older brother and my older sister, they went to private Catholic schools. Okay. And me and my sister, when we got, like, 14 is when we started getting freedom. So my mom kept us sheltered. Like, we were Bible quizzers all, all of our fuck, all of our mm -hmm. teen years. Mm -hmm. Like, it was crazy. So we never expo were exposed to that. But when I did do it, it was like, all right, I don't like this at all. The mess? Yeah. I was like, I don't like this because it was mm -hmm. burning. Yeah. Like, I hated it. But then I was like, wait a minute. Where can I get some at? Like, mm -hmm. where can I get some at? And then from there, it went from just getting it. Then I started selling it. And then I got caught. Mm. And when I went to jail, man, jail was not for me. I was in there for 64 days. I promise you, those whole 64 days, I had nothing and nobody. Because my mom was like, nah, you need to get clean. Like, you out here doing the most. Like, for real. Mm -hmm. Like, because it got to a point, like, I had wanted it so much, so I was like, what am I going to do to get it? I was working. I was a manager at Burger King. Okay. So I was making money. So I was like, well, let me just start selling it. Let me learn how to do it. Let me learn how to weigh everything out. I went on YouTube. <laughs> I went on YouTube and no learned how way. to weigh everything out. Yo, I promise you. Shame I... on you, YouTube. <laughs> Shame on you. Like, yo, they taught me everything. How I, everything. They taught me everything. So when I finally did, and you know, I got comfortable with everybody that I was around, I started having meth parties. Mm. Like, Damn, every time. how long did that last? I mean, I feel like <laughs> you know days. What I'm saying? people don't go to sleep. Days, bro. days, yeah. nights, weeks. I was trying to tell you, like, it was crazy. Like, I got so comfortable. I woke up one morning, went to work. Before I even went to work, I made a thousand dollars. I called my job. I was like, "Look, I quit." Mm. <laughs> right? Like, I why, was like, "I quit." <laughs> why am I going? Why am I going to go in there and do that? That was my full time job. Like, right. that was my literally full time job. And then. Um, when I got caught up, one of my friends, she snitched on me. I was getting ready to say, probably somebody telling. She snitched on me, but I don't, I don't have no hard feelings towards her anymore, mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. Because at first, of when I found out, I was like, Hey, that's 64 days of misery made you, reminded you real bad of who put right. you there, right? Yeah. But I was like, um, I did everything before for her. I did everything for this girl. She mm -hmm. had nothing for her baby. I gave her everything. Brought the baby's car seat so she could leave the hospital, everything. Man, it's crazy how that's, couple months that's later, wanted to get you. She though. told me. She told on me. Mm. So after that had happened, and when I did go to jail, it was the worst. Like, it was the worst. Because, I'm. first of all, <laughs> like I said, I ain't never been in a situation to where, like, I had to go to jail. Like, my brothers and stuff, he, when he was younger, he was always in, in and out of jail. Mm -hmm. My dad, my uncle was all in and out of jail. You know what I'm saying? But, so you knew a little about it, but you never experienced never. it. Never. Which jail was it? RSW. RSW. <laughs> that was an okay. RSW. Okay. So I'm sitting there like, what the fuck am I do? In the holding cell. In the, Because when I got locked up, 
I was high as shit. Mm-hmm. The night I got locked up, I got I was high. Mm-hmm. Didn't even know there was an indictment out for me because I had left Woodstock and went to Reston. I fled. I, I bounced. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, I got to get out of here. Mm-hmm. Everybody was like, you got to leave. Mm-hmm. So I left, and me, stupid, being high, wanted to come back and get some more shit, got locked up. Well, I got into an altercation, and then come to find out there was an uh, indictment out for me. So that's how I got locked up. What was the indictment for? <sighs> For the distribution? distribution. For the, it for was the distribution. Snitching. It was distribution. Okay. But when I got charged, I had 17 charges. Wow. Federal charges. No shit. 17 federal charges. Okay. And half of them was like manufacturing, all this other kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I was like, wait, I don't even know what's in meth. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> how you gonna hit me with this? They, they hit me with a kingpin charge. Mm. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, I'm gonna jail for life. Like, that's what I really thought. Mm-hmm. But I had never been in trouble before. So um, I had a really good lawyer too, but the experience in jail, man, it was nothing like I've ever experienced in my life. Nothing, and I've seen somebody get shot in the fucking forehead. Mm. Like it was nothing that I I wouldn't wish jail on, on anybody. Mm-hmm. On my worst enemy, I wouldn't wish jail. It was bad. It was uncomfortable. It was dirty. They didn't care. It was crazy. I did not like jail at all. Yeah, I guess it's not supposed to be a vacation, right? Definitely not. Because <laughs> it definitely taught me my lesson. Mm. And then when I got out of RSW, I was out for like maybe like a month. And then the FBI came looking for me. Mm. And I was like, what the fuck? I go to court literally tomorrow for the situation that y'all are locking me up for now. Mm-hmm. But they was like, um, it don't even matter. Your case went federal. So now you got to start all over. Mm-hmm. They took me to Orange County Prison, mm. the holding prison. That was even worse than RSW. That place is way worse than RSW, that place was, bro. It was worse than RSW. That, that food is so terrible in that place, bro. Let me worst jail ever. The only thing that I really had a problem with out there was the open dorms and everything. Like, so that that's was what, my that's shit. what I was going to ask my you. Is that where they was, had you? Yes, it was crazy because in RSW, it was only two people in the cell. Right. Nothing right. like that. Everything was open there. Mm-hmm. The bathrooms, the shower, everything mm-hmm. was open there. I was mm-hmm. like, what? The in-? I was like, oh, no. I was like, oh, hell no. But thank God I only was there for a week. I was only there for a week because I got right out. But when I did go to court, though, it was it was bad because my lawyer was like, because I, I didn't know the legal system or anything. So mm-hmm. I lied up until they basically they showed me the fucking video of me selling the shit right. <laughs> to where I couldn't lie no more. Because everybody was like, don't say you did it. So I was like, I was following that. So I was like, I ain't do nothing. So the man was like, we have you on video. I was like, well, you're going to have to show me the video. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to have to let me see. Right. So when they did see it, when I did see it, I was like, oh. Okay. I was like, yeah, that's me. Yeah, I was that's like, that's me. me. Like, <laughs> yeah, so let me tell okay. you what happened that okay. day. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. So what, but, what had happened was. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that happened. So my um, the day of my court, my the judge was like, she kept asking me, do you want to go to rehab? I was like, for what? Like, since this happened, I haven't been on meth or mm-hmm, anything. Like, mm-hmm. I haven't relapsed or nothing. Like, right. I didn't do it because when I went, when I stepped out of the jail, mm-mm, that was it. I was not, I'm, I'm not right, going back. Right. Like, I was not going back. So, And I'm, you knew the drugs was what put you in jail. Exactly. So I made it a point to get myself clean mm-hmm. without rehab and all that. Mm-hmm. But she did ask me, she was like several times, she was like, do you want to go to rehab? Do you want to go to rehab? Because at first I thought I was going to jail. Because I was facing like two years of some change. And I was like, oh my God, why is she asking me this? I could ask my lawyer, like, why is she asking me this? Like, and they can make a choice to jail or rehab. Because if it's jail or rehab, I'm going to rehab. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to go back to jail. But she was like, oh, well, we come to a decision. But the prosecutor, though, <laughs> he was like, oh no, we want to send him to jail. Because at first, like, they wanted me to. Snitch on people and do Always. all this other kind That's of shit. That's how the feds work, bro. So I was like, first of all, everybody knows me in Woodstock. Like, I'm well known in Woodstock. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, everybody knows who Kenny is. I can't snitch on nobody. My whole fucking family lives in Woodstock. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck? So I was like, no, off jump. <laughs> it wasn't no conversation. It wasn't no question about it or anything. I was like, Y'all got the wrong one. All right, but we'll give <laughs> you this downward departure. Yeah, We're y'all got the wrong time. I'm gonna sit in jail if that's what the case mm-hmm. is, because it's either me and my family. You know what I'm right. saying? Because you don't know what people out here going to do these days. Yeah, and I feel like, man, I don't know. I've always stood on that same belief, bro. It's like, if you're going to do the crime, do the time. I'm not going to throw nobody else under the bus. You're never going to find paperwork with me telling and or see, doing that anything was the crazy. biggest. I think that was my biggest mistake because I always said, 
I'm not going to get in trouble for nobody else. I'm not mm-hmm. going to jail for nobody else. That's what mm-hmm. I always said when I started selling shit. Mm-hmm. So when we, everybody got locked up, this girl snitched on 38 people. Oh, We were damn. all locked up together. So everybody thought it was me that was snitching. So I was like, I'm in here with y'all. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. I was like, if I was snitching, I wouldn't be in here. But when it came out and they, everybody found out it was a girl, mm-hmm. they was like, oh, Kenny, I'm sorry. Da, da, da. Right. No. I'm, well, you I'm, got your discoveries, right? Didn't you? Exactly. Yeah, you got to read I got mine on job. Me too. <laughs> I got mine on read, job. I read every name and everything that snitches yes, said about Yes, because they was like, because um, that's what they kept telling me. Everybody kept telling me, get your discovery of motion. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know what that is. How do I request right. for that? Da, 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 da. They was like, just tell mm-hmm. your lawyer you want a discovery of motion. So I did that. And then maybe like a month before my sentencing, that's when I got the discovery of motion. When I found out who it was, I was like, I'm telling everybody. I was like, I'm mm-hmm. telling everybody who she is. I was like, da, right. da, da, da. Hell but yeah. everybody already knew because right. she's snitched on 38 people in right. Woodstock. Right. Our, our case was something similar to that, too, where it had like 75 or 80 people on it. When they brought my, uh, disc- uh, what, what, what do you call it? Shit, we just said it. Discovery. Yeah, when they brought the discovery in, it was a, it was like this thick. Yeah, it was like yeah, it was, was like so much too. of it because of everything that was in there, man. The feds are pretty thorough with yeah. that kind of shit. They um they questioned my whole neighborhood. Yeah, which everybody knew I was selling meth on the neighborhood right. and the property because at that point I really didn't care anymore. Right. anymore. Everybody knew I was having parties. I was having meth parties, but nobody would call the police. That was a crazy thing. Nobody would call the police on me. Right. So I got comfortable. Couldn't, couldn't have been you that know what disruptive I'm then, you know. It really wasn't. It was chill, but. I got comfortable. Mm-hmm. And everybody told me, like, oh, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't get comfortable. Mm-hmm. But I'm just a friendly person. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, I like to have fun. Like I told you, when I said that, I'm a vibe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was just party, party, party. Right. And I didn't care. And that's what really got me hemmed up. So how long has it been since you come home? Um, All this happened in 2019. 2019. Okay, so about five years. Yeah. All okay. this happened about that time. And been clean since? Ever since. Okay. <laughs> Ever since. You don't all smoke that... weed, don't oh, no. drink. No, 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 sorry. I smoke weed. California. I smoke weed. California. Yeah, I... California <laughs> Look, okay, let me tell you. you. <laughs> I smoke weed. I'm, I'm... Oh, no. Stop the camera. <laughs> I smoke weed. I smoke weed. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have, I've smoked weed since I was 16. Okay. And when I got introduced to weed, it was like, it was the best thing. Like, mm-hmm. it was the best thing. So, I don't think I'm ever going to stop smoking weed. Mm-hmm. Um, Even in my probation period, I don't know. Well, shit, it's over. I don't mm-hmm. care. Even in my probation period, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was still smoking. Like, during the whole time I was on probation. Right. And I was on federal probation, so my probation officer, she came to my house and everything. Yeah, that's what they do. They she come, came. They, there's no appointments. They just gonna no, pop up. it was. But, like, I lived in Fort Valley when I first got on federal probation. So she would call me and be like, hey, I'm coming this day, da 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 so I would know. Mm-hmm. But when I moved back in town into Woodstock, it so wasn't So the feds no also don't allow you to get a prescription either. They don't. They don't allow you to get around that, do they? Because no. the feds don't recognize the legality. No, definitely not. Because um, I've heard when, that before. I'm not sure if that's exactly true, but I always heard that that was it. Like state stuff, I had state probation. I got my card. I could smoke. Yeah. I couldn't do nothing. It's just like a prescription, anything When else. we came legal, um, I was still on probation. Because I got three years probation. Mm-hmm. Um, And they was like, because uh, I called my probation officer. I was like, look, look we just legal. Right. Can I smoke? Right. <laughs> she was like, no. Mm-mm. She was like, don't even do it. Don't even think about it. And you asked about a card? No, I didn't ask about the card because mm-hmm. when I asked about if I could smoke, she was just like straight no. So right. I was like, all right, well, they ain't no point in doing all that. Right. I'd be curious to know if you can get a prescription and and they can't say nothing because it's a I mean, doctor's doctor prescription, know, so. bro. Like, <laughs> what can they do? If you went in there with Oxycontin, they couldn't say nothing if it was exactly. on a prescription. So I feel like weed should be the same way. Yeah, because even in that sense of saying that, when um the last year of my probation, I almost died, like a coma, everything. It was bad. Okay, from what? Um, I had a cyst in my throat. Wow. And I went to the doctors. They cut it open. But me being so big, my throat was, like, real fat. (laughs) It was fat. And so, like, the cyst was, like, way down in my throat. And Mm. they only cut the top open. So all the toxins were getting into my body, so my body went septic. Right there by your lymph nodes and all that stuff. Yeah, before I even went to the doctors, it was my throat was closing. Oh. My friend, I went to go see my friend at work. She was like, no, nah, you need to go to the doctor before you Could, die in your sleep. Right, you couldn't breathe, I couldn't swallow. I, mean, I, I was feeling fine. Like, nothing was wrong. The only thing that happened, the only thing that changed was my voice. Huh. Like, I wasn't hurting, I wasn't sick or anything. So I did go to the doctor because I was like, okay, my voice did change. So when I did go to the doctor, they was like, oh, you got to go to Winchester in the morning to get this lance open, da 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 I did that. That same day, I got back home. My throat was swollen. So I jumped in my car and I went to the hospital. And that was March 17, 2021. Okay. I went to the hospital, um, uh, Woodstock Hospital. 
I went to sleep. I woke up a month later in Morgantown, West Virginia. Wow. <laughs> I woke up a month later in Morgantown, West Virginia. Um, when my body went septic, well, I woke up, I'm lying. I woke up one time in, Win- in Winchester. It was like in the middle of the night. My throat was open. I was in ICU. Oh. My throat was open. So when I woke up from then, that's when I was in West Virginia. I had a trach in my throat. I lost all feeling in my leg. I just learned how to walk a year and a half ago. Mm. So that shit was crazy. That took me down. And that's when I fell into my depression. Okay. And within the depression part, I was like, man, what should I do? I'm not going to be, I'm paralyzed, da, 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 da. Like, what can I do to not to be depressed in about this? Right. That's when it came about the podcast. So I was like, oh, well, I'm going to do it. I kept putting it off, kept putting it off. So when I started walking again, I thought of the idea for the podcast again. And I was like, well, what should I do? How should I do it? This and that, da, 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 da. Blunt Talk with Big Sexy has always been the name for the podcast ever since mm-hmm. I started it. Mm-hmm. So when what is I it fought, called? Blunt Talk with Big Blunt Sexy. Blunt Talk. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Blunt Talk I with like Big that. Sexy. I like that. I like that play <laughs> on words thing. right yes. there. So are we burning? Yes. We're burning. All through the every We're podcast. getting to the point. Every podcast. Gotcha. Every podcast. Okay, bet. Now, there, there was a couple of podcasts that I did, though, that well, we weren't smoking in. Right. Well, you was too high when you started. You didn't <laughs> need to smoke. <laughs> the very first that. podcast that I did, uh-huh. we smoked seven blunts in the podcast. No way. How long was it? 40 minutes. No. Uh, <laughs> how many of you? Three. Okay. And like, That's still a little excessive. It was. It was like I. I was all over the place. Right, I forgot like, what we were talking we're about. Oh, everything yeah, in the I've podcast. Been I've, like, been I've been people there. I've been there. was getting up, eating in the podcast, making food. Everything. Right. Like my podcast is like, I would say it's a little uncut. Uh-huh, it's not uh-huh, uh-huh. like the normal. We're hanging out, chilling. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I started the process of the podcast while I was going through my depression and all that to try to keep me not being depressed. Gotcha. So then, when I did actually start the podcast. Three months ago. Well, it started a month ago. Mm-hmm. And everybody's been real supportive about it and everything. You know, it's it's been going good. Mm-hmm. It's slow. Mm-hmm. It, it is. It's bro. slow. Trust me. I, and it's I, a lot of work. That. It's a that. lot of work. Because I'm doing everything by myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the editing, putting all the videos together, everything. It's crazy. But the support from everybody that I'm around me is great. And that's the only thing I really like and I look forward to is the support. Because... When I started the podcast, I wanted to do something that's just like, okay, this is not just for me. It's for everybody involved and right. everybody around. Like, we ain't doing nothing anyway. We just sitting here every day, sitting in the same circle, talking about dumb shit, smoking weed. Let's put this on camera and show everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what we did. So, but the support about it is amazing. I love it. Like, I definitely love the support that everybody give me and everybody help out with the podcast. It's a couple people that's been like, occurring reoccurring in my podcast mm-hmm. like yeah like they are definitely solid mm-hmm. <laughs> like i feel like you need solid people when you're doing stuff like this because trying to do it on your own is it's hard real hard and it's hard <laughs> it's hard to find people that'll do it with you when they don't see the benefits exactly like and most people see benefits as money yeah and if you don't have money to pay them then they're not showing up that's what exactly. i go through every day i'm trying yeah. to build a team too man and i don't have the money to do it so they have to want to either learn what I'm doing, learn from me, teach me, grow with me, or mm-hmm. then they just kind of fall to the wayside. And I've got several that, you know, that are just, they've helped, but they're gone they're right now, there. bro. They, they won't commit. Mm-hmm. And I'm still here. I'm going to stay here until I get the team members that I need exactly. to make this work. Exactly. But yeah, the support thing, man, I can relate to that too, because, you know, one out of what, I don't know, one out of 500 views, maybe somebody will mm-hmm. reach out. And say something, you know, hey, I appreciate this, or this was good, or whatever yeah. like that, man. That that does hit you in a different spot, for sure. Yeah, like, when I started seeing the comments and the views and everything, I was like, oh, shit, it's popping off a little mm-hmm. bit, it's popping off. But it's not really, like, like I said, it's slow. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like I want to be in here, we have, like, mm-hmm. a million views on this video, mm-hmm. this video, mm-hmm. this video. Mm-hmm. But it's all the patience. patience so is check this out, listen to this part of it. For me... I feel like a lot of this content creation has replaced my drug use and the dopamine portion of my brain. Yeah. Because I am so uh, focused on it that sometimes I can't focus on other things. Yeah. Like I can't even watch TV at night and relax because I'm so focused on what I should be doing, what I want to be doing. And it's not that those things are like 
a weighing responsibility as much as they are, yo, let's go do this. Yeah. Yo, let's go. We should be doing this. We should yeah. be doing this. This is going to make us feel better than this stupid TV program you're yeah. sitting here watching right now, Jamie. Actually, Get your ass up. <laughs> actually, I actually go through that. Like, I be sitting in the bed, like, I be watching TV, but then I be thinking, like, what's my next podcast going to be about? Mm-hmm. Like, what am I going to do with this? Like, what am I going to do with this? Just like last night, for example, I was like, man, I was like, God, is this the right thing to do? Should I go on this podcast? Should mm-hmm. I not? Should I do it? Should I not? Should I do it? Like, what do I do? And I was like, well, what are we going to talk about? How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? Like, it, it's crazy. Like, I can definitely uh, relate because the process and thinking, it takes over. It infests your thoughts. <laughs> it definitely does. But like, like you said, it replaces the thought of, oh, shit, let me go get high. Let mm-hmm. me go do this. Let me do that. Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. And like, honestly, that's why I started my podcast because I saw the people around me, they... Y'all doing some hardcore shit. Like, it's not just y'all smoking weed. Like, let's do something else. Like, mm-hmm. right. y'all gonna end up going to jail. Like, mm-hmm. no, I don't like that. Let's get into something legit fun and legal. Right. So that's why I came up with Blunt mm-hmm. Talk with Big Sexy. That's we like up. smoking weed anyway. It's legal, right. so let's get it in. Right. So that's what we've been doing. And it's going good. We're on our 10th video, mm-hmm. which is actually filming today. Where are you <laughs> posting? Uh, YouTube. I post on YouTube. Okay, bet. And Facebook. Okay, bet. I do all of that. Nice. But my YouTube is not my, it's not Blunt Talk with Vic Sexy. Oh. It's Akbar Murray. Okay. That's my YouTube. You can find all the Blunt Talk out there. My okay. Facebook, I reposted. I got two different Facebooks. I got the Blunt Talk page. Okay. And then my Akbar Murray page. Okay. And every, I post everything on there. Right. Everything. I post on Snapchat, Instagram. Bet. Everything is under Akbar Murray. There you go. That's what <laughs> I wanted you to drop. Is basically yeah, drop your socials real quick so Akbar people can Murray. find you. Murray. You can find me Akbar Murray, and it's not spelled the regular way. It's A K B E R M U R R A Y. Write you that down. Me. Write that down. Definitely. Find Follow him. the video. Write me down. Find hey, it. Nah, do that right <laughs> hey, now. Yes, like, like, and subscribe, share, all of that. Ain't <laughs> it, man? Do all them things, bro. Yeah, you're getting the flow down. It takes yeah. a little bit to start getting that going, man. I've been working with this for two years, and I'm glad to to work with other creators, other people that are interested in the yeah. same stuff. Um, good luck building what you're building, bro. Yes, and because I think it's I think it's fun for you. I think it's something that you can reach out to people. Yeah, and so many people are sitting at home and don't have the ability or whatever maybe they, whatever something's lacking and they can't get out and do those things but they're going to enjoy watching it because they're kicking it with you yeah exactly. after a while they learn your character exactly. how many creators do you follow that you feel like you know i'm gonna say none okay and the only reason i'm gonna say none is because people change like people mm-hmm. change like the weather you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying so like today i'm happy da, 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 da. But the next day, you know, I may be sad right so, but and, at the same time too is, is if you know a creator to the point of knowing You've watched the podcast. We talked about their life. We watched that for three right. hours. You know that person a little bit, right, right? Right, right, They don't even know that you watched it. Right. So now when you show up to them, you kind of feel like you know them a little bit, yeah. right? But they don't even know that you watched the podcast. Okay, so definitely you. Okay. Because I, when, when I hit you up the first time, uh-huh. that's when I started watching your podcast. Okay. And your truck sessions. I, watched, I started okay. watching all of that. Okay. So you definitely won. And then there's another content creator I watch. is Mr. Crying So Bad. Okay. He has a podcast, and I like his podcast a lot. He came from TikTok. Mm-hmm. Like, most of the content creators I watch, come from, they came from TikTok. Okay. So I was like, man, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? I was like, I don't want to take from anybody, but that's, <laughs> but that's what I was doing. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I was taking from there, but sure. this person, that person. You know what I'm saying? And I just made it my own. That's what you're supposed to do. I just made it my own. And that's like, what you're supposed to do, because if they're doing it and they're doing it the correct way, just take what they're doing and change it to right. yours. Exactly. And that's what I've been doing. Like I said, it's been a struggle, because... Everything is like by myself and yeah. this and that. Time and consuming. Yeah, it it definitely is. It definitely is. And then, but like, like I said, the people are so supportive. Like everybody where I live at, they be like, "Are you doing the podcast? Are you doing the podcast? Mm-hmm. Are you doing the podcast?" Right. And I'm like, man, we just did one. Like, calm down. Like, right, right. we got time. Yeah, like, that's good. That's that, you're gonna grow quickly if you got people when yeah. you're like that. You're gonna grow quick, man. Don't even trip. Yeah, and that's what everybody keeps telling me. Like. Do three, four videos so that way you can post them and then mm-hmm. do three more with da, 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 Just keep the flow of videos going. Mm-hmm. And I, that's where I'm lacking of keeping the consistency of videos yeah. because it's a lot. It's mm-hmm. a lot. Like editing videos, one video takes me almost two hours to edit, edit mm-hmm. on my phone. So it's a lot. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, man. So I guess I got a couple of things we'll talk about off camera that'll, that'll help you with some of that stuff that just won't be super interesting yeah. for the podcast. So we'll, <laughs> we'll just save that part. Um, so what do you do every day to keep you clean? Like the podcast, like do you go um, to meetings or no, do you take any medications? I didn't do none of that. I didn't do any of that. Like I didn't go to rehab or anything like that. It was just my faith in my mom and my sister 
support. Like when I moved in with my sister, it was like. I was back in motherfucking jail, mm -hmm. <laughs> for real, because she was mm -hmm. like, you're not doing this, you're not going that place, da, da, da. but I needed that, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I definitely needed that from my mom and my sister, mm -hmm. because I was back in town, and all my friends were still around, so I was like, Trouble. what the fuck am I going to do? Trouble. Right, and I mean, the thought of not going back to jail, that's really what stopped me from doing everything, because mm. I was like, man. So the consequence was what set you down, man. It's like, bro, I'm going to set you down, and we're going <sighs> to tighten you up. It definitely was, and it definitely did. Because those 64 days in RSW, it was the worst. Mm. It was the worst. Because when I tell you, I told you I had nothing. Like, my mom was like, oh, you're in there to get clean. We're not helping you. Mm -hmm. We're not helping you. So no you're about food, to find out. no commissary, no nothing. nothing. Damn. The, um, I was in there. I did one person's hair. And that was all it took. Mm. <laughs> After that. Oh, then you got your hustle. I got Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. I found my hustle when I was in jail. Quickly. I did. I was doing hair. Everybody wanted their hair braided. Everybody, all the dudes wanted their hair dreaded, retwisted. Right. Yeah, give me them soups. Give hey, me that body man. wash. Right. Give me all of that. Like, right. I need Order that. Order me some of that grease real quick so I can take care of <laughs> yeah, all of you I need like, some equipment. Yeah, and, then, and they did it, though. Like, yeah, everybody that wanted their hair done, they did it. Hell yeah. Of course they and did. And once I caught on to that, it was cool. And then, like, it's, it, no, no. Let me not, not say it was cool. Right, it was definitely not cool. It was cool. not cool, <laughs> but it was much, it, it eased up. Yes. It eased up a lot. Right, well, when that motherfucking belly ain't screaming at you at nighttime when you're trying to sleep, is a lot better. When yeah. It, when and, it, at least there's a little something in there. And my, um, sleep. <laughs> the way, another way I got off of meth, when I went to jail, mm -hmm. it was, it was nothing. So I had no addiction in jail. I, I didn't go through withdrawals or anything. Mm -hmm. And mind you, when I started meth, I weighed 500 pounds. Mm. When I got out of RSW, I was 346. Mm. I was 346, so everybody was like, what the fuck? Where you at? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you still see me, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you don't see me. But it was bad. Like, the meth, it was. It took over my life. Mm. It made me lose everything. And I I pray that everybody that's on meth, they find a, they find a better way. <laughs> For real, because it definitely destroyed my life. And that's something I don't ever want to do again. Right. I don't ever want to go back to that part. I don't regret it because it was a learning experience. I definitely Major don't regret who you it. Are. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It made me, and, and it definitely did because it made me who I am with people. Because I'm not so trustworthy with people anymore. Mm. But it made me. And I wouldn't say it made me not trust people. It just made me stronger with how I treat people. Because back then I was just like, "Hey, come on! Hey, come on! Hey, come mm -hmm. on!" You know what I'm saying? But Mm -hmm. Not no more. <laughs> yeah, I feel not that. no more. Cause I, uh, I mean, I'm not doing nothing to get in trouble with, but it's just the fact of, are you my friend for real, or right. what's your what's your dark motive? Cause I feel like everybody has a hidden agenda anyway. So <laughs> I just be looking at people different now after that happened. Yeah, I've learned to uh, judge people, and not necessarily judge, but you're if you're always late, I'm gonna expect you to be late. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you're always trying to borrow money, then I'm going to expect you to call yeah. me to borrow money type stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I think that's something I've learned from years of experience in dealing with people, Yeah, too. definitely. If they show you who you are, believe them. Yeah, right. If they show you who you are, believe mm -hmm. them. Believe them. Yeah, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah, it won't happen yeah. the third time. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. not going to happen the third time. So, yeah, man, I guess we can wrap up. Anything else you want to drop, yeah. talk about, speak on, message for the world, mission statement? What's up? Uh... Message for the world, live for your life, live for you, nobody else. That's all you can do. Yeah. Just live for yourself. Hell yeah. No matter what the situation is, live for yourself. Right. Don't live for nobody. That's it's going to bring man. you down. This turned out nice, man. This turned out <laughs> cool. Yes, I loved it. Thank you. It. Thanks yeah. for having me. Absolutely. Thanks it for having me. It was a good me. time. It was a good time, man. I yeah, appreciate it definitely you was. The vibe is in the building. Hey, man. That's what's up? <laughs> the vibe is in the building. Right, right. And like you said, like, subscribe, and share, man. Y'all know yes. how this works, bro. This little channel needs to grow. Go over and subscribe to my man. He's got a million different socials. He's doing yes. some cool stuff, man. Go over yes. there and check him out. Akbar Murray. That's Long what's up. with Big Sexy. Hell yeah. <laughs> Until the next time, don't sweat the petty things. Pet the sweaty things. <laughs> Pet the sweaty uh, things. Pet right. the sweaty things. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Don't sweat them petty things, man. <laughs>